Hello and welcome to our presentation on academic integrity. The W.P. Carey School of Business takes academic integrity very seriously as it is not only important to develop values and skills for future employment, but it is also important to assure that the students in our college are being evaluated for their own work. This presentation is intended to help you understand what we mean when we say academic integrity. In today's presentation, we will discuss the definition of academic integrity, some common types of violations, and resources that you can use during your time here at W.P. Carey and ASU. Let's get started. So what is academic integrity? Academic integrity identifies the ethical boundaries that students should emphasize and support in their scholastic work. So as a student, you must act with honesty and integrity, avoid deceit, and respect the rights of your classmates. It is your responsibility to know the rules for completing each of your assignments and for asking a professor or a TA for clarification if needed. Even if you unknowingly violate part of the academic integrity policy, you are still responsible for your actions and you will be subject to penalty. The consequences of academic integrity violations can be many. Students who have been found to violate any portion of the policy will receive one or more of the following sanctions. One, failure for the assignment with zero points. Two, a reduced final course grade. Three, an XE listed as the final course grade on your transcript. And this XE is a special piece that we use to denote failure due to academic dishonesty. This XE will stay on your transcript even after you graduate from ASU. And finally, four, removal from the W.P. Carey School of Business, meaning you would not be allowed to get your undergraduate degree in one of our business majors. So let's look at a few types of violations. First is using unauthorized materials. And this would be buying, selling, distributing, obtaining, reviewing, or possessing any materials or devices not authorized by the instructor. So most students recognize that using a calculator during an exam when specifically told by the instructor not to would be a form of dishonesty. However, just having a set of notes or a cell phone in your pocket during an exam could be enough to create an academic integrity violation. You should always make sure that you leave all unauthorized materials put away either in your bag or your purse. Other students could also be considered a sort of unauthorized material. You may have gotten in the habit of having a friend, a sibling, or a parent look over your work, but if that person makes significant changes and you still submit the assignment, you're not being completely truthful about who authored that assignment. It is good practice to have someone look over your work before you submit it, but it is bad practice to have someone make great changes to your paper. Another violation would be cheating, and this would be looking at another student's assignment and building your response from that material. And this could be an assignment that the student is currently completing or something from a previous semester. So most of you know not to look off of another student while completing an exam, but this is less clear when the assignments are completed outside of the classroom. When you're given an assignment, you should assume that you are expected to complete the assignment as an individual person unless the professor specifically states that you can collaborate. You could not ethically ask just to see a classmate's assignment or to look at a graded exam from a friend who took the class in an earlier semester. If you're having any difficulty completing an assignment, it's better to talk to the TA or the professor before the assignment is due versus asking for help from a friend so that you don't put yourself in a bad situation. The same thing goes when you're on the other side of the situation. This is called abetting. Giving another student permission to look at your assignment, allowing that student to build his or her response from that material is also an academic integrity violation. Your roommate might ask to look over a paper you wrote because she's having a little bit of difficulty starting the assignment and the class is really important to her. Though you may want to be helpful, it's not worth the risk of being charged with academic dishonesty since you would be giving your friend unauthorized help if you let her look at your work. You alone are responsible for safeguarding your work and for saying no when asked to share your work with another student. Pooling is another type of academic integrity violation that is often not considered by students. 
When you work with one or more students to complete an assignment or exam without specific permission from the instructor to complete the assignment as a group, you are violating the academic integrity policy. Instructors may encourage you to collaborate when you're in the classroom, but the same type of collaboration does not always apply outside of the classroom. So imagine that you and a small group of your classmates want to get together to work on a set of homework problems. It might be tempting to have one person solve one question each and then copy all the correct answers onto one uh, piece of homework. However, the expectation from the professor was for students to submit their own individual work. So completing these assignments as a group is considered unauthorized collaboration. Again, if you have any difficulty with an assignment, you should first speak to a professor or a TA who can direct you on ways to improve and find additional help. You should also keep drafts of your work and your assignments to show that you did complete the assignments individually in case there is ever a question. Plagiarism is another common form of academic integrity violations, and this would be submitting the words, ideas, data, and or multimedia, so things like images, videos, that are created by another person or organization, either in part or in whole, without identifying the source. Plagiarism comes in many different forms, but they are all considered academic dishonesty. Most people think of plagiarism as either buying or stealing the work of someone else in its entirety and then submitting it as your own. This might be using a, a website on the internet to buy a paper or to take um, a paper off of someone's computer. Plagiarism, however, can also be taking the work of multiple people and combining it together in one form and still not identifying the number of sources. This might be copying and pasting multiple pieces of research from the internet, much like the image shows, and then pasting them together into a paper. If it wasn't your idea and it wasn't your words, it's not your property and therefore is considered plagiarism. You can plagiarize from classmates, the internet, and other sources from the library. Any time that you don't identify the information, it's plagiarism. This is often a problem in research essays where you're required to cite all of your sources. And you can be charged with academic dishonesty whether you simply leave out all of the source citations, you leave out only some of the source citations, or you include incorrect or fake source citations. If it is not 100% entirely composed by you and you do not cite the source, you put yourself at risk for being charged with an academic integrity violation. Plagiarism also applies in group research projects. If one of your teammates plagiarizes a portion of the paper and you as a group submit it without the identifying source material, you can still be charged for you'll receive a sanction. If your name is on it, it's your work, even if it was completed collaboratively and you need to be checking and working with your partners to make sure that everybody is representing the material as their own. Self-plagiarism is another form of academic integrity that often has never been discussed. Self-plagiarizing is reusing one's own material from another academic course without the explicit prior approval of the instructor. So like the graphic shows, if you had a paper on one topic and you submitted it to professor number one, and then you realize that professor number two wanted a paper on pretty much the same topic. If you simply copy the paper and change the heading and resubmitted it to the second instructor, it would be considered self-plagiarism and would be considered academic dishonesty. Classes are often building off the same concepts and topics, and so you may find at some point in your college career that you're assigned an essay that in one class that's similar to an essay you wrote in a previous. It can be very tempting just to print off another copy of the same paper, but you can't. It's academic integrity violation. It may be difficult to understand why you cannot submit work that's your own. However, when you take a course, there is an expectation that you will do new and original work for that class. If every student in the course is expected to do the same amount of work as all the other students, this policy works. However, if one classmate recycles a paper, he is giving himself an unfair advantage over all of the other students in the class who have to create their material from scratch. 
And finally, the last form of academic integrity violation are impersonating. This is using or acting as a substitute for another person during a test or another assignment, including just signing an attendance sheet without actually being present. You should know that it is dishonest to take a test for someone else or to have someone else take a test for you, whether that test is in person or online. However, impersonation or fraud occurs any time you misrepresent who you are or what you have done. Impersonation violations can occur on academic assignments, on verification of attendance through a sign-up sheet, a card swipe, or a website login, but it can also include falsification of any documentation related to employment or absences. Do not think that fraud will go unnoticed as the W.P. Carey School of Business holds integrity as our highest value. Academic integrity violations may affect you also by seeing someone else violate the policies. So if you see something, you should say something. Report any student suspected of violating the academic integrity policy to a professor or a TA in the class, or if it's not in a class that you're taking, to another staff member. So how do you maintain your own integrity? Make sure to complete assignments on your own. Assume that you're not supposed to work with anybody else and you cannot collaborate unless you are specifically told by your faculty to work with others. If you have any questions about completing an assignment or about using material from a previous course, talk to your professor or TA. They are the ones who can give you the best guidance. And finally, be honest and truthful in all of your actions, both as a student and as a professional. All you need to do is listen to your conscience. If it doesn't feel right, it's probably not right, so don't do it. The W.P. Carey School has built a website guide for all of our students, both at the graduate and undergraduate levels. It includes resources such as our honor code and the university's academic integrity policy. You can access this site through the my.wpcarey.asu.edu page, looking up, up along the top navigation and clicking on academic integrity. ASU also has an academic integrity site that applies to students across all of the campuses, all of the colleges, and all of the majors. And this can be found at provost.asu.edu slash academic integrity, all one word. And finally, if you follow these guidelines, you will be an ethical and a successful student and future business professional. Thank you for your attention.